So I will stop sharing. Okay, let me try. I'm sorry about this. It is connecting now. It is saying that connecting. Ah, then then it will come. Wait, 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 from Priya. It will come. Wait. So we know that uh, the academic institutions. Let me continue my talk. Uh, academic institutions are of uh, different types. And uh, if you look at a broader sense, then uh, it's not only the colleges or universities. And uh, it also includes, in a way, institutes of uh, higher learning. So it's very, very difficult to have. I'm sorry, I'll why? Send it to Patnak, he will share it yeah. if it is not for you. Look at the product say. Let me stop. Say no. It is also not stopping. Is it? It is not also stopping sharing. Share content. We can't display your share content. Make sure that you have allowed permission to share content. I probably I need I need some permission there. I am trying. I'll share again. As you told, to create co host, then go to the screen, then go to the screen. But we tried that just before the talk. I was here. Uh, send it to Dr. Patnaik, he will share from there if it is not. A speaker can be made a co host. Oh, it is not done. But we tried, Dr. Patnaik. Before only they are to there, I saw something got might have gone wrong. I, no, okay, just again they are doing that one. Just doing it. Oh, okay. If you have PPT, sir, if you can send me, oh, you keep it. No, no, I'll he can be made the co host. The speaker can be made a co host. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is it. But how, how you told that it's okay, everybody, whoever were there at the beginning, they told that we can see your slides. So no, I, in the beginning it was seen, sir, but now it is not. So can you send your PPT by mail? Dasav, can you send the PPT by email so that we can share here? No, no, I'll do that. There's no problem. Yeah. I'm doing but I could have done that earlier also. Uh, please send uh, by email so but now I can uh, show it. Yeah. You too? Okay. So it is because of the low bandwidth, uh, it is not being possible from the Dasav's angle. Yeah, it would have been really convenient for me to operate myself. But anyway, it is showing, it is showing because of the low bandwidth, you cannot present. <laughs> it is showing that. Oh, is it so? Uh -huh. So please send the email and what time you can open here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm sending in the Gmail. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I made a email call. Please send. Did you get? Yeah, no, just uh, I, yeah, I'm. One minute. I'm checking now. Just, just one, one minute. Looks like it, sir. Okay. Yeah. I have sent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just I'm checking, sir. Yes, sir. As in your Gmail. I have sent yes. in your Gmail. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just a minute.
Yeah, now I got it. Yes, work. So now this my sharing is not even stopping. If somebody will share, then that will automatically go. I'm really sorry for this. Is you okay now? Yes. But I can't see. I can't see. You can't see? No, because my... Anyway, I can open my slide and go and tell it. But I... Uh, my, because I did it, uh, that sharing thing, it is continuing, it is continuing. And uh, I don't have any option of closing. Yes, sir, okay. you can log out and, sir, just join the Webex once again. Okay, I close the program. Sir, 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 slide. Are you pitching over, right? Ah, it's working. Okay, fine, sir. Is it okay? Can you see the slide, sir? I can see. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. So, sir, go ahead, sir. Yes. Thank, thank God. But technology also creates problem. I am very sorry. Uh, so, so as I told earlier, uh, uh, I have just started uh, thinking about this in the last two couple of years. And uh, I have uh, prepared these slides in a broader way not to the exact title of uh, development of trained manpower and uh, strict limits of the academic institutions. Next, please. So uh, we'll discuss on what type of, first of all, the types of academic institution, very briefly, then the multi-dimensions of weather and climate, and uh, what has happened during last 100 years, and uh, what the academic institutions have contributed to the field. So we should know the history, uh, how the academies have played a role. And then uh, what will happen into the future and the impact of climate change also on the academic systems. The climate change is also, without our knowledge, is affecting the climate system, academic system. And then uh, the status of weather and climate studies in India and I will give some suggestions uh, to work together uh, where I would like to put A in between, P, A, P, because academics can have a very good bond between the private and the public sectors. Next, please. So academic institutions are uh, different types, as you know, and now it's very difficult to have a clear boundary. They are basically dedicated to education, research, and also uh, both education and research. And uh, the academic institutions, some award degrees and diplomas, and some award both. And there are also accredited uh, institutions, and some are not accredited because of the government policy and rules and regulations. Uh, we'll discuss beyond this. Next, please. So universities are similarly, there are also differences. Strictly speaking, there are universities and institutions difference. Even the institute and the institutions, there are differences. If you look into the clear definitions, which are completely blurred now. Usually universities are dedicated for higher education. Institutes are dedicated for other aspects also, like business, media, fashion, etc. 
Universities focus on research oriented studies and institutes or institutions go for specialization industry related, usual. Universities often have affiliated colleges and institutes have schools even, schools and NGOs, things like that. So when one refers to the organization established for a specific cause, such as education, research, and science, either of these words can work. Either you can use institute or institutions or university. Really, there is no difference. And gradually with technology, this difference is getting blurred. Next. So you can, you can accordingly think of what I'm going to speak next, please. So this discussion is not limited to the restricted boundaries of the type of academic institutions or institute and uh, even training manpower only. It is beyond training. You can think research, everything. It includes all involved in academic pursuits such as universities, national institutes, government organizations, involved in weather and climate related to uh, RLD, uh, where students are registered for even MSEC, MSc, PhD. That means they can work in one uh, R&D institution and they can register in another university. There are various examples like MOS institutions and uh, basically it will be for capacity building, including the, the research and development. Next, please. So, we know that uh, multi weather and climate has different facets. Uh, it's subject-wise, it includes physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology, computer science, and environmental science, a lot of things. And uh, also, uh, effective-wise, it affects uh, all sections of the society, agriculture, human health, water availability, ecosystem, biodiversity, and uh, it is why that is why it is necessary that you have to take everybody into the fold when it is about uh, the climate change, especially. Next page. So, solution to uh, it is well known that solution to climate change is not simple. Basically, it is a global problem, and it happens because of the greenhouse gas in very simple terms. And uh, best solution is the reduce the emission, but uh, emission reduction is linked to the revolution, industrial revolution, and industry is also connected to the growth, so-called growth. And economy of a country is the backbone of the growth, so it's a matter of geopolitics. That is the complex issue here. Is climate change is not a only scientific aspect, it's not limited to the scientists. It is limited to everybody, including the policymakers and politics. Next, please. So we have to go for action at all levels. Uh, there are international treaties. There are national climate missions as in India. And also there are state action plans. Every state in our country has their own action plans. So that is the government sector. Now for scientists who have to understand critically the, what are the issues and try for better forecast, early warning systems, for example, to save life and property. And technocrats can think of inventing clean energy sources, different uh, green energy. Students have a very important role because they, at the formative stage, can have ideas, out-of-box solutions, which cannot enter into our head. And citizens have also played role. There are many countries where citizen science are coming up and their data has some scientific value. With uh, bias corrections and other corrective measures, they can be utilized for the good of the society. And also, very, very important sector is uh, societies, metrological societies, scientific societies like IFA, IFMS, IMS, SHAMA, because AMS and Royal Mail Society have contributed a lot to the education at large. And uh, general mass also have very important role because it is their behavior which is really affecting. They should understand how to save energy and water by all means. Next, please. 
So when you look into the literature, you'll find a very interesting paper. It says 100 years of progress in forecasting and NWP applications. It was basically written through AMF, AMS, American Med Society. Next, please. Very interesting literature, a piece of literature. Next, please. In 100 years, it is found that uh, you can divide, he has actually essentially divided in this paper the up to 2018 for uh, historical era, 1919 to 39, you can say the age of maps and uh, graphical methods using advection methods for forecasting. Then came the age of aviation, uh, 1939 to 56, with the more stress on the aviation sector. Uh, airports have observatories and forecasting methods. Then came the era three, that is 56 to 85, where forecasting with a mixture of maps, graphics, and NWP came into being. And the modern era. Next, please. Modern era, we know what is happening, but I'll discuss a little bit. So he has uh, uh, actually looked into eight sectors in these four eras plus the next 30 years, what is going to happen. So there are two tables. This is showing the four, uh, uh, this five era and state of forecasting, then uh, uh, this uh, observations used for forecasting, then science understanding, influencing the forecasting, community of forecast providers, these are the four sectors here to discuss. You can see that the initial phase, government was the basic agents. Government was giving forecast and they were bothered about weather. Then the next phase, gradually, military cooperation also came into being. And university departments also joined. So the collaboration little enhanced because of the demand and requirements, things like that. Then the stage came like era four. Era for the private sectors of forecasters, strengthened with public and academic, it was public weather enterprise. Those things came into being. And what will happen in future is basically stress on the global weather enterprise type of things. Next, I will try to explain. And the next four sections, four types or four sectors, uh, discuss about the forecasting applications, quantum forecasting, Quantitative forecasting, not quantum, quantitative forecasting, technology advances, uh, then comes the media, communication, etc. Here we find that if you think of one sector, particularly quantitative forecasting, then uh, in the first era, that was the groundwork being done by scientists like Richardson, Rusby, uh, Berkness, these are all academicians. And then in the next three era, you'll find gradually the entry of NWP and its advancement to better methods. And in the next 30 years, it is expected that in case of the media, communication, etc., environmental weather prediction will come, numerical and environmental weather prediction, environment will be part of that. So communication rely heavily on mobile phone, networks, internet, social media, artificial intelligence, machine learning, things like that. So it is going to be more and more complicated and uh, include different disciplines. Next, please. So this is another uh, nice article by Joseph Smagironsky, a stalwart in uh, weather climate modeling. Uh, his early collections, recollections in advances of geophysics where he has uh, talked about the uh, group developed at Institute for Advanced Studies. This is how the metrology group came into being and along with the computer, that is NEA. So 46 electronic computer project was established in that Institute IAS. Later 54, very busy period, started from 54 for geostropic models and complicated models. Then 55, IBM 701, to be used and 60 onwards subsequent developments took place. Next please. This is how academy and these are the all the stalwarts name in his reference. I found in his reference article so many scientists to which we know. Next please. How they have contributed to the growth of meteorological science. Next please. Now the climate modeling and Princeton. 
This is the Institute to Contribution that IA started and their collaboration between the, the Geophysical Fluid Dynamics Laboratory and the Princeton University. And we know the famous Nobel laureate that is Manove's contribution. That is Princeton GFDL luminary Manove produced a series of studies that are widely attributed with launching the long-term study of global climate warming and quantitative linking of the warming to the carbon dioxide emission. This is well known. But this all started at that stage with collaborative efforts. And Manove has also written a recent book that is Beyond Global Warming, How Numerical Models Reveal the Secrets of Climate Change. It's all very interesting to read for the youngsters and to learn how this science has developed. Next, please. So it is all collaboration with uh, next, please. Collaborative efforts are very essential. Smagironsky also, when you look into that, you find his uh, greatest contribution was, talent was, besides the scientific aspects, he can, as he could attract creative scientists to the staff of GFDM. That was the most important thing. And best example is Manove in 1959. There is a, he thought of the uh, climate model atmospheric part and uh, brain that is the ocean part. So he developed this crime, uh, climate model and he could attract the talent to this uh, uh, institution. And that is how there are a lot of growth and this uh, GCM, the general circulation model came into being and uh, 63 uh, Smagironsky, Manobe and their collaborators had completed nine level hemispheric model, primitive question general circulation model. And uh, Manobe, interesting thing is that Manobe was given a large programming staff. He didn't have to really go into details of the programming. That is how science grows. He was the think tank and he was all thinking about the scientific aspects and to implement that, there are other people. Next, please. And uh, there are other examples also, like ECMWF is the best example. I don't know whether one will call it the academic institute or research institute, because it is both. It is research institute and also it is operational. And there are also research scientists who is working there and affiliated to the lot of collaboration is going on with many universities. And the best example is the open IFS. IFS. Open IFS is the model, is the project which was Stockholm was the first meeting, I think, and uh, Stockholm University. And it's easy, easy to use a version of ECMWF's integrated forecasting system, and it is freely available to education and research universities. And not only that, they also they had holding type of thing. They are ready to uh, intermingle with the university scientists and work together, because this is a subject is like that. Next, please. And uh, another best example, very, very good example is that, which should be emulated by others, uh, like National Center for Atmospheric Research. On the Hello. 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 National Center for Atmospheric Research on the UCA is another glaring example which one should emulate. It was established in 1960 by NSF. And uh, this NCAR have been managed by UCAR, as I told. And uh, NCAR provides the atmospheric and related earth system science community with the state of the art resources, computers, research staff. And if necessary, the uh, in house staff can also interact with the uh, research community. And it's, uh, it's, it has provided rich education and outreach uh, opportunities from fellowship to early career scientists, to public lectures, scientific workshops, conferences, etc. Next, please. And uh, best example is again, the CCSM that is the, which is now the uh, Earth Science, Earth System Model version 2.2, and is all public domain and open source. One has to learn the best thing is that it is not developed by NCAR as such, is developed by a combination of universities. Next, please. And uh, scientists from all sectors, operational as well as academic sector. Next, please. And other example, as now every scientist, uh, 
young scientists uh, in India and other countries all over the world, they know about this WRF. That is the advanced research WRF, which is basically controlled by NCAR and their responsibility. Here you see that there are so many institutions who work together and one is University of Oklahoma. That is only to as a partner, but beyond that also other university scientists will involved. And uh, the other one is this uh, NMM, that is non isostatic model, which can even be used uh, at uh, across all scales, time scales, ranging from meters to thousands of kilometers on real time. Next, please. This growth has been possible. And another thing, as I told that climate change is reshaping college education. That is how. Why? This is a very nice article in science also. But you can see that uh, it has entered into all aspects, biology, chemistry, and all laboratories in the universities, even humanities. Next, please. Even to the uh, extent of humanity, humanist subjects, because it is found that the present courses are inadequate to tackle the climate. This is a strong feeling. And uh, uh, studying climate change has been decades of, for so many decades. It was a matter of only natural science. We have been considering there is a natural science. But now you can see that engineering students in IIT who introduced at the BTEC level uh, a course, uh, open course, where the many students were very much interested to join. And even little practical was just there to visiting IMD and other places with observatories and uh, design, science-based design is also a very, very important thing for the future. So in 2019, for example, one uh, architect student, he started this uh, Anthropocene anthro, uh, architecture school where they have been involved in climate science type of work. An interesting thing is that 2021 March, UK's Architects Climate Action Group, they formed the Action Network, a group, and uh, they interviewed, they made a student uh, survey, student survey, and they found that the students are not really happy, and they are saying that they are not, this present course, uh, not preparing them for future work in the world of climate breakdown, because climate crisis is going to happen, but our system of education is not really suitable to tackle this in future. That is a great thinking we have to make. Next, please. So academic sector can contribute a lot. States must help schools to tackle the climate crisis beyond what is on the curriculum. On the curriculum, they write the, uh, prepare themselves subject-wise and go to the examination and face marks. But beyond that, one should also try extracurricular activities like eco clubs in our country, many schools. We started the DST project that is called PRO, uh, their participatory means, and there were 100 schools, and in difference to other states, there were another 100 schools, and quite successful. Students were very much interested to learn about the climate aspect. And climate education needs expansion rapidly. Political scientists should look into climate migration and poverty. This should examine inequality between climate change. That has been a great talk, inequality in many places. Economists should discuss the impact of extreme weather events on national economics and the renewal understanding of human life uh, intermingled with the environment of reshaping education across the arts and humanities. You know, this climate change has to be mainstream. These all subjects should be taught uh, with an eye on the climate change, which is quite possible. Physics is very easy to talk about radiation and all these, which are all in climate science. Next, please. Similarly, in chemistry also and other subjects. Next, please. Next, please. So I will talk about now what is happening at the international stage in WMO, things like that. WMO, they have uh, in 2021, they released a white paper, the open consultative platform that is on the future of weather and climate forecasting. 
that were the contribution from our 30 leading experts from research, operation, and education fields who analyze the challenges and opportunities. And uh, they mentioned that uh, uh, national meteorological and hydrological services primarily give forecast. But however, we have we found that other institutions like uh, international organizations like ECMWF and even IBA private sector and many other private sector organizations and academic institutions to some extent have also joined this forecasting. And uh, 2019, WMO launched this uh, open consultative platform partnership, which is the next generation of weather and climate intelligence. How you can take create intelligence uh, society on this, including the uh, communities, stakeholders, academic, and everyone. Next, please. It's a very interesting paper. Uh, this cartoon shows that uh, although there are three important components, like research and development in the yellow one, operation is another, the green one, and the blue is services. They have to be, these have to be joined together. And all these three can be joined very nicely together. If at each stage, the stakeholders uh, join them. If at each stage, the stakeholders join, then it will be very, very successful. That is the open consultative platform mantra, basic mantra. Next, please. And important aspects of this, there are key points of this four to five key points. That is with appropriate investment in science and technology and through better PPE, the weather and climate enterprise will meet the increasing stakeholders demand. So it is there also talking, everybody is talking about the PPE and investment in science and technology. Infrastructure for forecasting, that is observational and high performance ecosystems through public private engagement. Then science and technology driving advancement of numerical prediction, that is numerical R system and weather to climate prediction, high resolution global ensembles, quality and diversity of models, innovation through uh, artificial intelligence and ML, leveraging through public private engagement. These are the emphasis through this OCP. And operational forecasting, that is from global to local, that is at the city level, even they are talking about challenges have to be taken. And acquiring value through weather and climate services, user perspective, forecast for decision support, bridging between high impact weather and climate services, education and training is also very, very important. Next, please. WMO is thinking to change. That is why they have started the open educational practices. That is the initiative called Global Campus Initiative. Global Campus Initiative is collaboration, cooperation, and sharing. So they want to build upon the existing training centers they have on education and training, regional centers also they have. They want to build on those and uh, increase the learning opportunities for members through increased visibility, sharing resources, facilitating innovations, and promoting compliance and international standards, enhancing quality. The present quality in that training centers is not up to mark, that is the feeling. So WMO Global Campus is an education training initiative, uh, and it will pick up in future definitely. Next, please. That we should. Uh, and uh, what is the benefits? Uh, what are the benefits for the university collaboration? Universities see this initiative, Global Campus Initiative, as one mechanism for expanding their offerings beyond traditional on site degrees. Because they alone cannot do that. They have to include the operational agencies. So far as this, this particular subject is concerned. And the Global Campus can help them wider variety of students and understand the market for more advanced topics. They can innovate courses and global campus can expand brand awareness of the university. They will get a leverage in their brand. They can make online courses and short courses more viable through greater visibility and many benefits is institutional collaboration in course and resource development. These are the future I'm talking about. Next please. When exactly this will happen, when it will be practiced is a matter of time. Next, please. But in order to go 
into these details of the climate challenge. It is very essential. Next, please. So, as I told, future is the global weather enterprise. This application of numerical, environmental, and weather prediction in the larger forecasting community. That is called the global weather enterprise. And as per these uh, authors, Thorpe and Rogers, 2018 paper, they are saying that success, it, it has to come, but the success will follow the future of roadmap of the challenges, which will depend on the collaboration, strength, commitment, and excellence of the public, private, and academic sectors involved. There's a very, very important thrust on the public, private, and academic. Academics are there because I feel that, that's why I told that A should be in between because they can easily bond with the public institutions and private institutions. Academics at all sectors, all levels. Next, please. So, we have, there are two very simple examples, I but very exciting. No, no, next, yeah, very exciting. One is called CBAM, that is the concern based adaptation model. Concern based adaptation model has been existing mostly in schools and uh, some research settings. These tools are commonly used to help leaders, evaluators, and researchers understand, monitor, and guide the complex process of implementing new initiative practices. This is this type of, uh, uh, I'm very interested, I'm very much interested to go into that. I have not read in details, but CBM technique has been utilized by a private company that is called tomorrow.io. They are powered by the other intelligence software this private company has helped teams prepare for business impact of weather by automating decision making and enabling climate adaptation at scale. It helps countries, business, and individuals better manage their weather related challenges with the best information and insight. So, weather forecasting is not going to be limited to only giving the forecast, it is much beyond that. And similarly, education in weather and climate will not be limited to certain subjects like dynamic meteorology and WP you are talking about. It has to be beyond this. And the academic sector, I'm sure, can contribute a lot. Next, please. So in India, if you look at, we have very good presence even in the intramolar funding as well as extramolar funding. Intramolar funding is, uh, you know about the basic uh, ministry, uh, that is the Ministry of Art Sciences, IMD, IIT. These uh, contributions are very well known. MOEF is also there. Then Department of Science, the Ministry of Science, Wadia Institute of Himalayan Geology, SAC from ISRO, PRL, NARL, then CMAX from Council of... So almost all important organizations in government of India have something to do with climate, uh, including CDA, because they have also numerical weather prediction and Ministry of Water Resources. So because climate touches everybody, that is why I'm sorry if I have uh, not uh, mentioned uh, particular institutions, I might have missed, uh, I apologize for that. Like, but these are the funding directly given from the government of India. Next. But there are also universities and colleges. Next, please. Universities and colleges, which are funded by other sources, uh, not uh, uh, exactly by your government, but extramolar funding, best example is DST and uh, MOES uh, and ISRO, all organizations also fund. That is why during the last uh, two decades at least, there are so many institutions in addition to the earlier ones like ISC, IITs, almost all IITs now, many various IITs have this subject, art science and uh, together with the art science. And uh, central universities, uh, then uh, state universities, uh, old universities like Andhra and Cochin and Calcutta, then private universities are also started, and uh, ICERs, then uh, NICER in Bhubaneswar, NITs also have started, like in the Raul Kala, very nice group. Again, I am sorry if I have missed uh, 
uh, any particular institute, not with intention, but by mistake. Next, please. So we have very good presence in climate. Uh, and uh, the collaborative side, I would say that uh, collaboration first, uh, in a way, as you know, the collaboration started, uh, IMD thought that the research part should be uh, in collaboration with other organizations. So they started the Center of uh, uh, Atmospheric Science in IIT Delhi. That's the best example long back it started. And uh, uh, also we went for a program, as I told, probe in schools. This type of examples are there in collaborative mode. But now the existing one is the MOES desk program is very, very interesting that they, although they started in 2011, the CAT program, which uh, I, I am not very much aware of what happened, but the DISC program, which was initiated in 2018 to create a large pool of trained and dedicated multidisciplinary art system and climate research workforce in the country. And these objectives are to implement GRF, SRF, and MOES in a centralized way and organize courses, short-term courses, then uh, strengthen research and education support for science of the climate and change through uh, conferences and uh, uh, seminars, things like that. So I'm giving this example because uh, we cannot say that education means educational sector means only IITs or only even the MOES uh, uh, type of organizations can join hands with universities and uh, create a uh, ecosystem for academics. So academics includes uh, almost all who are engaged in teaching, uh, even if they are working in a different place. Next, please. So I'm not confined to only the so-called educational institutions. And uh, uh, extramural, if you think about it all, the DST funding is very, very important. And there are two missions they are handling. And they, where there are uh, COEs, major research projects, network programs, uh, that's doing very good results and uh, several scientists and hundreds of scientists are being engaged in the for capacity development. So this type of extramural activities are also necessary for the education sector to grow. So it's a two-way process. Next, please. So where do we stand? I will summarize now next four or five slides. Where do we stand? The era of NWP has taken the progress in weather and climate to new heights and uh, people have gained confidence. People have now confidence on us. Above has happened because of working together of scientists from operational agencies and institutes of higher learning, which created close ties between research and development efforts of different organizations. It is not only the national scenario, but this is what I showed that Internationally also we have grown as a subject because of this type of collaboration, because the subject is like that. Without computer, for example, we could not have come to this stage in WP. Scientific breakthrough has come due to theoretical advances in predictability, fluid dynamics, numerical methods, subgrid scale physics parameters, and uh, assimilation of diverse uh, observations into the surface and space observations and overall, the overall high performance computing system. Next, please. And where should we, what is come, next, please. What lies ahead? Increasing demand for climate products by every sector in the society for every region at all time scales. People have now the confidence to demand uh, weather forecasting and future uh, scenario of climate, every village almost. And there is optimism that with increasing understanding of the earth atmosphere, ocean system, and developments in infrastructure based on science and technology, it will be possible to reasonably deliver for this societal good. What is important is societal good, and it is possible. It is science has shown during the last uh, four or five decades. In the coming years, global non adjustative convective scale environmental weather prediction models can include uh, nonlinear turbulent processes explicitly using sub-kilometer scale limited area models ensembled at all time scales. It will realistically represent the effects of large cities also. That is the hope. And uh, energy budget, atmospheric flows, dispersion in complex, what not. A lot of things can be done. And any WP communication will rely heavily on mobile phone, network, internet, social media, etc. 
next week. This is going to come in future. So we need more collaborative efforts and the guidelines which are shown today, we have to think in that line at a greater thing. And in order to face the societal challenges in weather and climate, there needs to be increasing collaboration like WMO open consultative platform. We have to study details and learn how to go into that. WMO global campus initiative, how the universities can join and global weather enterprise, how it can work and what is our individual role or institute role in that and uh, public private academia collaboration, which is the central. Next, please. So I have some suggestions based on this. I have some suggestions to inspire students and early career scientists because they are the future. These, uh, all these efforts are uh, basically aimed at the early career scientists and students at different levels. Student fellowships may be institutionalized to encourage working especially in model development aimed at specific error diagnostics and corrections. That is, uh, I think, at present in a weak stage that models, what are the errors based on the process studies, how to diagnose those and correct those so that because every region has the peculiar problems and those can be solved by understanding the uh, on the spot things. Uh, uh, that is why the students special fellowships uh, may help. And close collaboration with MOES institutions. MOES has progressed a lot and a lot of developments in the country, but academic sectors are not able to go in the parallel. Along, they have to go along with them. MOES has started the collaborative efforts in a big way, but what is needed for future is that somehow, I don't know who will do and how it will be done. That is a greater thinking has to go into that. But unless the young people are intellectually satisfied by modeling, putting hand in the model, that's why I'm suggesting that community climate model concept has to come to India and here uh, we have to think of a young student uh, because modeling is the utmost satisfaction and it can help the science in a greater way. So how this will be available to uh, even a student working in uh, open, open domain like in universities, et cetera, that has to be thought of. Another interesting thing is startups. As I gave examples, that uh, startups uh, really things like students, students like IITs and the engineering colleges, they are very much thrilled with uh, startups and innovative ideas come to them when they start their own companies. So startup encourage youngsters to innovate and use their maximum energy for higher productivity and that will help the society. So that is one aspect one can think of. Then emphasis on climate education in schools and colleges. Colleges who don't have the undergraduate studies, schools who don't have this subject at all, it is taught only through geography, which is not adequate, and climate is not really represented in those subjects. But these are matter to think uh, in a depth, uh, greater depth, because these are state subjects, how, whether it should go into the syllabus, or how it will go, that's a different story. But uh, as a community, academic community, we can think of extracurricular activities for them. As I gave the example of PRO, and there are so many eco clubs, etc., which are very, very successful. And Royal May Society and AMS has shown that progress made by their efforts in schools, especially Royal May Society. There are many examples one can uh, go through that. And that is why. I'm suggesting that active involvement of the societies related to weather and climate have to be there because they, uh, they represent the, their members represent from different sectors, experienced, senior, they have time and energy, they need some facilitations, etc. That has to be thought of and 
IMS from that point of view and SAMA, which has just started, they have a very, very big role to play. Next, please. So we have to start somewhere. So if you ask me that uh, uh, the greater role of uh, academics, uh, academicians to be fulfilled, uh, we can't depend only on the government. The societies, uh, respective societies have a great responsibility and we have to think of uh, about that together. We have to start somewhere as Gandhiji has told. Thank you so much. I hope uh, you will appreciate my talk and I am open. I have not seen the time. If I have exceeded, I am very sorry. And I am very sorry for the initial pickup about the technological connectivity. Thank you all for your attention. And I will be happy to uh, reply uh, questions raised by any of you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. Extra, really excellent talk covering different aspect of uh, how the contribution of academic institutions. You have also given a long history of how the international institutions like NCAR, UCAR, that uh, ECM, WF, how they have progressed both because of the contribution of academics as well as research. And also you highlighted the different international like initiative global development global campus the global other enterprises public private academic the, they should work together and coming to the indian aspect also us many institutions are already doing and the collaborations you have also emphasized the collaborations the role of uh, this society and uh, startup so this is a very actually comprehensive talk actually and i enjoyed this one and many people must have enjoyed also Yes, so there may be some questions. So let us see. It is uh, YouTube uh, also there. We'll see the chat box. And since it is already WebEx, they can ask the question directly also. Uh, Hello, I'm Pian Sen. Since in my area, light is not there. Hmm. Yes. So I'm using my mobile telephone. Yes, sir. So, yeah, please. My question is this, that of late, the importance of weather and climate has been emphasized. Mm. And institutions, academic institutions are training people. So what we have seen in India, I'm not talking about other countries, I'm talking about India, that we have got, say, no undergraduate course in our university on meteorology or atmospheric science or climate and all these things. Don't you feel that we should introduce some amount of atmospheric science in the undergraduate level also? Yeah, thank you, Professor Sen. It is uh, really a very good question and uh, has been thought about that. And I, am, I agree with you that it has to be introduced at the undergraduate course, as undergraduate course. But the uh, question is how? Not, not as a subject itself, it may be a part of physics or geography yeah, or chemistry. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So in IIT system, as I told, there are uh, provisions for elective courses. So since uh, at the Center for Atmospheric Science has the responsibility of the research and development in this, we thought of, we introduced rather, not thought only, we introduced this course uh, at the BTEC level. Any engineering graduate can join. That is the facility in IIT. And it was a very, very good uh, response has come. Even when I was teaching, there were 240 students in a class and they were very much eager to join. So your point is very valid. It has to be. So if you have to be taken as an elective course in other IITs and IITs uh, nowadays, they can have. Delhi University has started a different type of graduation, so they can also have so to start a different department is difficult. But nowadays it is not really difficult if you start as a topic, as 100 marks or 50 marks or whatever. Ah, that is what similar, I think. Yeah, similar, that, that will serve the purpose. Otherwise, what happens that you change the syllabus and go to the state level to, to even I'm thinking of schools. When I talk about the pro- Yeah, schools, schools some elementary things can be taught to them. Yeah. You cannot, uh, you cannot, we tried to involve uh, the Uttarakhand education department that time, but it was so difficult. 
because uh, there are so many aspects we don't uh, we can't understand and devote time for that so we started telling as a taking as a project in the 10th standard 12th standard they have some as i understood that time there's a board has a so we encourage all the students to have a 20 marks uh, there is a observatory in the school and they were uh, taking the measurements uh, they were understanding the about the instruments and they're writing a project based on that which was being submitted to the uh, board uh, examination for evaluation that to, to start with that is also okay but i agree that it has to be go to the undergraduate level otherwise simply at the msc level and higher up it's not sufficient but let us see how we can try next please okay thank you very much professor das good afternoon i am mohanty so congratulations uh, dr das it was thank very, you. very excellent thank talk uh, and uh, one more thing actually when you tell to encourage the young students that's very good but i think we should build up also the job opportunities and job opportunity if we see all areas of science or arts everywhere maximum job goes in the academy sectors and whereas the metrology is in, in india is the only few places and best way to start this which i am pleading all the time this ims and imd or mos should convince ugc that the environmental science which is a very compulsory course in all undergraduate science arts commerce medicine engineering everywhere it is a environmental science is a compulsory course but if we see earth and was atmosphere ocean they constitute almost 50 percent but if we see syllabus it is mostly botany biological science mainly botany so if it can make a we can put an efforts that the environmental science can have 50 percent to cover earth and ocean that is climate science climate science means it is system of earth and ocean i mean atmosphere and ocean and to certain extent also earth so if that is can be introduced then a great job opportunity in the country can be evolved yeah. and then we can attract best people to enter in the subject and uh, because without a job everybody think also when they enter a science or anything they think for job but yeah. if you see maximum job in physics chemistry mathematics everywhere maximum job are in the university or academic sectors very few are the research institutions or few are the application institutions so therefore i think as a action plan if ims and mos work jointly to convince ugc that environmental science which is a compulsory course for the science for the common people it should have atmosphere and ocean almost 50 percent syllabus if that is there every university or college if we have one faculty joins with atmospheric science then we need thousands and thousands yeah so but I, yeah, that's very, very very good proposal I, i don't deny that it has to come and for that uh, uh ims has a very very big role to play and uh, because uh, you know the role of ams or all society in their respective countries so ims has a big role to play and uh, we have to make specific effort to do that and uh, whether environmental scientists will easily give up 50% i don't know but we can think of other ways forget about that we can uh, great thought has to go into that but my an other point is that is is not a question of that waiting for the universities and governments to uh, give jobs it is a question of in climate science it is possible for self employment so that's why i told startups when the startups come into being then a lot of uh, jo jobs will be generated and a lot of intelligent students who like to join because as i told you know in the uh, iits uh, or iims they pass most of them intelligent guys don't want to really work for the government and the particular sector they they work for few years in a private sector even 10 years 12 years then they start their own business that is their intellectual satisfaction and they also earn money and that is how the society progresses 
So in our field, if we want progress in addition to what I to what you told and what our Professor Sen told that to have a course, in addition to that, we should uh, encourage the, and there should be, I don't know how exactly, because I have never started a startup, but there should be provision for the youngsters to start their own private, uh, not only in forecasting. You see, this is the problem. There is a responsibility has to be divided. PPA means this responsibility has to be divided. First important work is responsibility to be divided. Everybody cannot go into forecasting. Forecasting, observations, etc. Some primary jobs about this forecasting and climate has to go to the government sector where the provision is there in their respective operational department in each country. However, there are other aspects which are coming up. As I told about city level, about uh, uh, pollution, about health, collecting data from different places and having different type of instruments, different sensors. Sensor is a very big issue nowadays. You can have different type of sensors and take observation even in your car. These type of things are the thrilling things to the youngsters. So climate science, if you talk of, if you talk of only atmospheric science and numerical weather prediction and forecasting, the matter is different. When you talk, that is why I started in a broad way, that climate includes everything. So everybody can uh, contribute to that and it will be essentially growth of the climate science. So I agree with you about UGC, but I also would uh, like to encourage the startups. Uh, one has to think how. Any any other live questions? Uh, I am Professor Shastri speaking from IIT Bhuneswar. Uh, in fact, I am a non-specialist. But in spite of that, I really enjoyed the talk of Professor Dash. And uh, uh, yes, it's a very interesting talk because I am not specialist. I come from geophysics. My discipline is geophysics. But uh, I really enjoyed your talk. You have given complete history of entire thing. Thank but you, Professor Shastri. Thank you, Professor Shastri. Okay. See, the, my uh, only request to you is: Can you elaborate uh, about the startups uh, for the younger generation in the atmospheric sciences? Because what I feel is the government agencies have all that data, the satellite imageries and everything. They go for the forecasting and predictions and all that. Okay, but how a, a young gentleman will sustain his startup? In a long run, in a long run, because it is any startup is a simple idea and a business idea. That business idea should be sustainable. And if it is not going to be, then perhaps that particular employment is only for a brief period, but not for long. So I think, uh, can you elaborate on this? Because you have a vast experience as I listened to your talk that I could understand it. Definitely, you are rightly said that this is a time that not government alone can provide jobs, but in the private sector, there are a number of opportunities. That's what I understand. Can you please elaborate that a bit more? That will so, be interesting for our students. Yeah, I can. I, I, I'll try to elaborate, but actually startups, I have not, uh, I have just looked from outside. And uh, I feel that uh, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, ML, uh, along with the data science. These are the ways uh, they have to think. The youngsters have to think how to use the data because future is going to be data science. You can churn the data and get uh, very good uh, information which will be useful for the society. IBM, etc. they have already started. Very small scale. Uh, I, re I was reading somewhere that even the um, wind strength, what type of wind strength can destroy uh, one uh, breeze, uh, that type of thing as a very micro scale, almost major and micro scale, they're able to succeed through algorithm, through algorithm and data, use of data science. And the type of forecast they are giving, it helps uh, to protect that property. This is possible. So how they will make money and sustain, that's a big question. There comes the role of, no, there comes the role of the policy. There has to be, once you know that this science has to grow and this science is not like a, uh, with boundaries. Uh, nowadays, in, in a way, all sciences are closed. 
it will be very difficult to distinguish between physics chemistry even. so Definitely. from that point of view this science when it grows uh, and to protect the because if society is your primary objective the government should come into being and have policies how to give initial uh, uh, seed money for example i am saying that in iit delhi they have organization called field fitt and they are encouraging students and teachers to work together and to start a company and even they are giving initial seed money and a room to start with okay after due consideration with the expert committees they are they going to that and some of them are coming up and after graduation those students can have their own company private company so this is the initial stage that means initial stage you have to support them yeah, I, I agree with you after three years four years when they find that it is going to pick up they will be separated they will go away no room will be given and the money probably they have to return or something like that and they can search so once this type of uh, uh, what you call seed uh, places come up automatically the big uh, people with having a lot of money they will invest there and they will go there so there will be some any you know any company there will be some failures but that yeah. is the business they will manage they will they will know how to survive but initially one has to handle them and for that they, the policy has to be in that direction if a BTEC student is supposed uh, helped, why not the MTEC student in atmospheric science to working in CAS? He also should be supported through a proper teacher so that after MTEC, because MTEC people don't want to really go for a job. And we don't have BTEC in atmospheric science. We have MTEC. But our study, the type of teaching we are making is not uh, sufficient for him to start a startup. Absolutely. So he has to be guided in that direction. What uh, subjects in other departments he will take up as elective. That is the interesting thing that you don't have to have a core subject. You can have elective. And elective is also very good to have some knowledge. So it is possible. Again, it has to be, I, I see, I am not telling that what I told will be implemented in one or two years. But this is what I am telling. This is the I, 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 and one has to be ready for that, otherwise, only one organization set up by the government will not be in a position uh, to do everything at the uh, even protecting from uh, every aspect. They can protect from cyclone, for example, but not the breeze. <laughs> they, they, even in manpower. And you know that if the organization becomes too large, it is also difficult to handle. So it has to be segregated. It has to be decentralized. Somebody else has to do that with clear division of responsibility. He will take the data from IMP. But you have to do it with a clear demarcation, MOU signing that your responsibility, once you are given the certificate, you don't think that you'll start your observations and uh, start giving forecast and publishing newspaper. That is wrong. Uh, that is thank, you, uh, thank you, Professor Dash. Yeah, I got, I got the answer. <laughs> okay. Sir, you are not audible, sir. Yeah, in the chat box, I can see there are some positive comments people have given about the talk, comprehensive talk. So, Dr. Kelkar sir, Tyagi sir, many have gone. One or two questions I'm just reading out. So, uh, Dasa can answer. Community climate model is one model which can support community weather bloggers. Local weather bloggers, eco clubs be encouraged. Similarly, independent okay. research from non-government and non-academic institutions may also be considered as part of weather and climate service and enterprise. Such community-based weather and climate researches and actions be supported to have more outreaches and adaptations, especially in gap areas. I fully agree. I thank you very much. I fully agree with that. And uh, it has to be broadened. It's not that uh, only a particular sector will work, but uh, it's true. Yeah, I think it's a comment. It's a comment, isn't it? Yeah, a comment. Yeah. One so I can fully agree, and that should be that. Yeah. Yeah. One more question. Most of these weather and climate services in India are confined to either government organization or select academia. Is there a plan to support other organization and community? If yes, how it is supported? No, there is no plan. These are my wild thoughts. <laughs> 
And no, no, there is no plan, but uh, it can be plan. It can be planned. It can be planned with the proper uh, all people who matter. That the most important is that uh, the idea should come, and uh, once the idea comes, there the there are people from the societies like uh, SAMA, IMS, IMD. They have to all uh, work together, and uh, MOES institutions, or other institutions, if necessary. And clearly define the responsibilities. First of all, the whole problem comes about the insecurity. The PPA is not really successful because of the in the mind. It's a human mind. So there are some insecurities which have to be removed. And there should be clear responsibility and guidelines. Uh, so after that only it can be done. So there's no plan with me now, but I can definitely contribute if. Uh, people who matter join together and uh, it uh, it is worked out sometime in future and the last question sir imd ims has started installing aws in each school what about that project because it should continue because this they are so common is that an aws in school is source of basic education at school level can aws be made mandatory in each school and college so this is just a in general question sir I think I have covered that one. So um, I will now request uh, DG Sir Mahaputra Sir, President IMS, to summarize and give his final comments and party views. Thank you, sir. You are not audible, Dr. Mahaputra. Mike is up. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Patnaik. So I, on behalf of um, all members of Indian Material Society, Indian Material Department, and then uh, all the distinguished uh, participants uh, in this uh, uh, meeting uh, extend a warm gratitude to our uh, Professor Eskedas for his excellent and outstanding Achha. talk on the burning topic. It has really addressed the various questions and thoughts in the minds of the students, young researchers, academics, even the organizations like MOES and other institutes within the country. Your thoughts and aspirations will go a long way to motivate all of us especially the suggestions made by you are well taken and I hope each of us will work out the ways and means to fulfill those gap areas so that in a country like India which is affected by all types of natural hazards which are weather and climate related and in a country like India, which is losing almost about three to five percent of GDP because of the various types of natural disasters, in a country like India, where people are behind the generation of the resources and opportunities for employment and the growth of the country, certainly your lecture will help. to have a new thought, new inspiration for each of us. And it will help in building the policy and plans also at the highest level to address the requirement of the community climate model, the startups, the streamlining the weather and climate sciences in the academics and R&D establishments and the participation of all the partners to make it PPA realistic in the present day scenario. There has been certainly a lot of initiatives in the country from Minister of Power Sciences, India Metrology Department and sister organizations, and also Indian Metrological Society. The, the start of program is being taken up by Minister of Power Sciences. It's time and planning of 
new technologies like data science, AI ML, with the numerical weather prediction modeling is also being taken off institutionally as well as at academic and institutes. I'm happy to inform that at present IMD is collaborating with many triple IT's and IIT's for development of AML techniques to address the requirement of weather forecasting and also the applications. One of the most, most important area where we have the strength as the meteorological community is the availability of the data in the country now. We may talk about big data now, but there has been a source of big data within the country from India Meteorology Department and allied organizations, starting with Say 1891 or 1881, we have the digital data for various types of observations, which is not measured on the period of time with satellite data and radar data. And as a policy towards the RD, the data are becoming free and easily accessible. So, therefore, there is enough opportunity for the not only the academic and RD and students and researchers, but also the startup groups. There is perhaps no such application in the country which is not having the requirement of the weather and climate information. Almost all sectors in the socioeconomic conditions Congress. can find the role of weather and climate. And therefore, the demand and supply chain in the society of today in the country is ever growing. And we have to meet the requirement or the demands of the society. And therefore, also the startups can come up with the various sectoral applications utilizing the big data available in the country. And to support these startups, the academic and RN institutions will have a major role for handholding in terms of the technical support. At the same time, the institutional organizations like MOES and others will work together to support the financial background required for sustenance of the startups. Therefore, there is a good hope and I am sure your lecture will motivate each of us to address all these issues and create a new era in the application of weather and climate sciences to serve the country for uplifting those socio-economic conditions. So once again, I thank uh, Professor Das for his uh, valuable time, his lecture, and his knowledge sharing with each of us. I also thank uh, all the IMS fellows, distinguished participants, former DGs, and the participants from Ministry of Arts Sciences and various institutions academic institutions, r and institutions, universities, IITs, for their active participation. This series of lectures will continue. Every month we will have one such distinguished personality delivering the lecture. And I request all of you to again join for our uh, next lecture. Uh, the upliftment of activity of Indian Meteorological Society I take this opportunity to request all of you to send your suggestions, comments, or continuous improvement in the activities of Indian Meteorological Society. We can work together to extend the services IMS towards the betterment of the science of weather and climate, and also towards the application of the weather and climate in betterment of the society. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your excellent comment. And I must thank Professor Dasar actually. Yeah, he shows this, uh, how much time and uh, yes, your energy you have spent for giving this talk. And people have appreciated. And it is also the the problem what the YouTube was initially having, but not there. But from the beginning of your talk, everything was live. 
so this talk will be available so people can uh, listen to this also later in we will upload it in uh, ims website and the link is available anybody can see that thing thank you very much sir and thank you all the viewers so we'll be back again with the uh, next month with some other expert thank you very much thank you thank you. Thank you. Thank you.